From the Rust Center for Media in downtown Cape Girardeau, welcome to Focus on Southeast, a program on issues, events, and people impacting Southeast Missouri State University. I'm Dan Woods with KRCU Public Radio. On today's show, we will be talking with CMO President Dr. Carlos Vargas and learn more about some recent agreements and programs that enhance the mission of Southeast Missouri State University. Dr. Vargas, always good to see you. Thanks for being here. Thank you. It's a pleasure being here. Thank you. So we're going to look back over the past six months or so at some of the many things that have been happening. So let's start first with uh, an agreement with St. Francis for an online Bachelor of Applied Science and Allied Health. Tell us about that. Well, that was a very interesting development. Uh, actually, St. Francis approached us. Uh, they have a uh, workers, uh, part of their uh, workforce, uh, that have a technical degree, essentially an associate's degree, and they wanted to provide an opportunity for them to move forward in their education. Um, these are degrees in the area of radiologic, uh, radiologic technology, okay. uh, medical imaging, and uh, normally those jobs require an associate degree and, and that's all. And so they wanted to provide a pathway for their employees to be able to move forward and get a bachelor's degree. So we developed a completer program so that they can go into our Bachelor of Applied Science that we have in Allied Health. And so it was a very good uh, development. We, our faculty work with them. Uh, we put together the curriculum. And, and, and the, the interesting thing is that we did it at their uh, request, but then the program is open to anybody. Uh, it doesn't have to be somebody only working at, at St. Francis. Okay. So that we're excited about uh, providing an opportunity for a pathway for individuals who are in the workforce right now to be able to get a bachelor's degree. We've talked a lot on the show about how the university is trying to meet the needs of employers, but here you had an, employ an employer approach the university. Mm -hmm. This is a perfect partnership. Yes, it's fantastic. So I'm, I'm excited about that and we're very thankful to St. Francis for doing that. Yeah. Let's talk a little about uh, this partnering with the Missouri Division of Finance, a collaborative program between the Co Harrison College of Business and the state's finance division. What's that about? Well, the division of finance at the, at the state level, they're always struggling trying to find talent, individuals that can work in their, in their division. Mm -hmm. And uh, they've decided that they needed to or they wanted to connect with uh, universities. So uh, they, uh, they uh, visited us. Uh, this was a development that took place through a member of the community here in Cape who is actually a member of their board. And so uh, they talked about it and they came to visit. I met with the commissioner and uh, we talked about the interest that they had. We uh, put them in contact with the College of Business. The, the College of Business, the dean, um, uh, uh, he uh, organized a meeting with faculty and they came together and uh, the commissioner is really excited about uh, this partnership with the university. We're going to they're going to provide internships. They're going to have internships for our students, and they're actually going to come sometimes in a periodic basis to talk to our students here so that to, uh, our students explore the potential to get a job with them. Uh, and we're, I think it's a fantastic opportunity. Uh, very often what they do is they lose individuals that work in the Division of Finance because they are essentially overseeing right, uh, organizations, okay. financial organizations across the state. And so they learn, wow. the students learn about that. And then very often they actually move on to a financial organization, to a bank uh, or okay. similar institution. So it's a perfect training yeah. for individuals in the banking industry, but they start uh, very often at the Division of Finance uh, in Missouri. So it's, it's a great partnership too. Yeah. I'm going to ask something a little off track here. <clears throat> so this makes me, these seem like these happen fairly, I want to say quickly, but we've talked before about how sometimes pr getting a program developed, it takes maybe longer than it should. Is this sort of more of a model now where higher education in Southeast Missouri State University specifically is moving quicker to meet the needs quicker to get the programs developed quicker? Is that fair to say? I want to believe that that is the case. I think we have been communicating that in our faculty are reacting uh, very positively to that added pressure, if you want to. Mm -hmm. um, they, uh, there's more of an understanding of how important it is for the organizations external to the university to have the talent that they need. And so we as an institution are responding 
very positively to that uh, opportunity. And that's what uh, the Division of Finance has told us. They're very pleased with the response from our faculty uh, and the speed that uh, they have actually responded with. So yes, I believe okay. that the university really is stepping up um, and really responding to the, uh, to the needs of the community. Let's talk a little about entrepreneurial training. Uh, something happening in Sykeston, what's that? Uh, well, about? as a result of funding that we received from the state uh, through a MoExcels grant uh, that they provide to uh, institutions of higher education, uh, we uh, received a grant that we decided to use some of it uh, to uh, uh, contribute and partner with a business in Sykeston, uh, in particular Allen Wire, which is a well-known industry in Sykeston. And um, they have created in downtown Sykeston a facility that uh, they make available for training uh, for office space, mm -hmm. uh, also for members of the community locally. And so we partner with them by um, contributing funding to establishing, we call it a Red Hawks room, uh, Red, Hawks, Red Hawks classroom there, okay. so that we have technology, we have seating, we have uh, the opportunity now to go and take training directly to that downtown area in Saxton. And this is, uh, for the most part, uh, non-credit training. So these are opportunities for the workforce to uh, engage in uh, a variety of training opportunities, uh, many of which are not really part of the academic offerings of the institution. So we're doing that because, as you know, we have in Saxton also a building uh, in the uh, north side of Saxton uh, where we do offer academic programming. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> We're here on this on the set of the Interest Center doing TV show right now, and there's an agreement with um, Sacred Heart University, Inter American University, and Anna G. Mendez University that ties in with KFES and Great Television. Tell us about that. Yeah, that's another example of uh, an industry coming to us and saying, "Hey, we need your help. Uh, do you have this that we need?" Well, um, KFES came to talk to us and said, "Do you have?" students uh, who are uh, in the field of bilingual journalism. And we thought, well, that's an interesting question. Can help, help us understand the yeah. origin of that. Well, it turns out that KFBS pairing company, which is called Great Television, acquired recently um, a number of channels, TV channels from Telemundo. Telemundo is a Hispanic network. Mm -hmm. And, and so they provide a lot of programming in Spanish and in English. So when uh, KFVS uh, came to us, they said, look, we really want to become leaders in the U.S. in terms of providing talent to our own organization on bilingual uh, programming. So uh, we do have uh, a journalism program at the university, which is uh, one of the only two that are accredited in, in the state of Missouri, as a matter of fact. But we also are part of a consortium, the university is part of a consortium of universities whose mission is to use technology to promote student success. And many of those universities are actually based in Puerto Rico. And so uh, when that question came to us, we thought, let's talk to our partners in Puerto Rico and see, uh, and they do have journalism programs. Uh, and so we actually developed a model where these uh, institutions would send students here to the university and the students would enroll in an in a internship. Um, and the internship would give them the opportunity to work at KFVS. So that's okay. the model we have in place now. And, uh, and we're, we're, we have already signed the agreements with three, those three universities mm -hmm. that you mentioned. And uh, 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 Mr. Conroy and I are going to be visiting um, Puerto Rico to meet with the presidents of those universities oh, wow. in the near future uh, to strengthen that connection uh, for um, KFVS through Mr. Conroy to uh, become more knowledgeable about what they do, what they offer. I, I think it's a really exciting development and opportunity for, for the community, for KFVS, for the university. So we're all excited about what's happening there.
And again, this was another instance where the business came to the university first. That's correct. Yes, so it's, uh, it's happening. <laughs> so what's changed? I think in many cases, it's a result of people becoming more aware that we are around and that maybe we are a resource for them. Mm. Um, we, we do, uh, and I personally try to uh, communicate whenever I meet with individuals in the community, businesses, uh, industries, to, to that, that we want to help, yeah. uh, that we want to partner in. Um, we don't just sit back and say, come and tell us what you need. We go to them. Yeah. We go to them, we visit them to try to figure out what is it that they do and see if there is a way that we can develop either programming uh, for credit, uh, programming that is not for credit, just training, um, or uh, partnering with them in whatever way. We've done that with TJ Missouri, for example, mm -hmm. in Perryville, uh, where we developed a program also where, where their employees um, the technical employees can take this program and, and uh, get training as they are um, interested in becoming managers. So the program that we have is a four-year degree that in, with TJ Missouri where the employees actually get tuition benefits from TJ Missouri so they can go into that program. Yeah. So this is an example of some of the things we're doing. We want to partner. That's something that I've repeated uh, to many people uh, to many people uh, all the time is like, we want to be helpful, we want to be partners in promoting the economic development of the region. And people are responding and they're, they're coming to talk to you. I think so, yes. Which is good. Yes. Um, a new job center at, at, at Catapult with the Missouri Department of Higher Education and Workforce Development. Tell mm -hmm. us about that. Yes, that's another exciting relationship where we are engaging the community. So uh, this is, uh, Catapult has been, uh, uh, located in Broadway, on Broadway mm -hmm. for quite some time uh, yeah. before I came here. And we have now uh, reimagined the role that Catapult can play. So we actually are using Catapult now as a location where a job center from the state of Missouri is located. And so um, as individuals who are looking for jobs, they want to be helpful, uh, helped, uh, mm -hmm. They go there and they go to a facility which is not actually inside the university. It is, as you know, in the downtown area of Cape. Right. It's a lot easier to get to. Yeah. Uh, I think in some ways being outside of the campus itself um, is uh, a very good thing because sometimes people uh, may feel a little bit uneasy or intimidated if they, haven't, if they have not a college degree or so yeah. to go into a campus. And by the way, our campus doesn't have a lot of very clear signage. <laughs> and so sometimes it's difficult to get to yeah. know where you go, but here it is yeah. relatively easy to get to. And uh, so we have the job center. We have now uh, a tenant at the, at the facility in Catapult where uh, the tenant is hiring uh, students on a part-time basis uh, for some of the operations uh, that they are engaged in. So it's, it's really exciting. And, we actually have also displayed uh, a display there of uh, student uh, art uh, yeah. from from our own uh, River Campus students. So it's it's a really uh, it's an exciting uh, coming together uh, of the university with the community, mm -hmm. uh, and and again providing support and contributing for to the economic development of the area, uh, because many of the yeah. resources that the job center has are supplementing some of the resources that we ourselves have through the career services okay. office at the university. Yeah, things work together really nice sometimes, mm -hmm. don't Yes. They? Mm -hmm. um, let's move on to a Bachelor of Science in Professional Studies. And I, you said this is available in person online. What is that program about? So that, that program is, is a really, uh, is a reimagined uh, general studies program. Uh, and what we've done is we've tried to uh, be very, uh, deliberate in um, creating this program in such a way that it becomes uh, attractive to individuals who may not have a college degree, uh, maybe um, uh, older adults uh, that are in the workforce or even students, uh, regular students at the university who are interested in the getting a professional degree. And okay. the degree can actually be tailored to the interests of the student. So it's a very broad uh, program 
that allows the student to work with an advisor, identify the areas that the student is interested in, and put together a unique program that allows them to get a bachelor's degree mm -hmm. in professional studies and thereby um, uh, satisfy their interests and, and be in a position to get, in, to, to get a college degree so that they can get a, a good job. Mm. So it's another way of engaging with the community and being responsive to the needs for talent in, yeah. the, in the region. Yeah. Well, let's take a break and pause for just a moment, and we'll talk some more when we come back. You're watching Focus on Southeast. We'll talk with Dr. Vargas Moore right after this. When times get dark, we can't see the help that's all around us. Let 211 be your guiding light for help with food, health care, and other resources. 211, how can I help you? Call 211 or visit 211.org. 211, get connected, get help. My mother was always very familiar with her neighborhood, but one day she stopped at the stop sign for much longer than usual, and uh, she didn't know whether she should go forward or, or turn, and she wasn't even really sure where she was at. It was very unsettling for her. I felt so much better after my son told me, Mom, I don't want you to worry or be afraid. I'll be there for you, and we'll figure it out. Welcome back to Focus on Southeast. We're spending time today with Southeast <coughs> President Dr. Carlos Vargas. We've talked about a lot of things, and we've got some more that I'd like to visit with you about. Relaunching an MBA program, um, what's that going to look like? It's going to be very exciting. Um, uh, actually, uh, it, it happens that MBAs have become very popular, and then they the popularity goes down and then comes back up. Okay. And so like a roller coaster. It, it's, it's always like in a roller coaster. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. One of the things we are trying to do, and again, it follows the theme of some of the things we've been talking about, is how, do we, how can we use our academic programming to connect more effectively with the, with the workforce? How can we make our programs more um, relevant to, to what the individuals out there want? And how do we make it in such a way that people don't see a lot of obstacles? Well, an MBA okay. um, and the and many institutions in, in the past tended to be one where you almost needed a, a, a bachelor's degree in business before you could get into the MBA okay. because it's a master's level program. But what more and more people have recognized is that you don't need a lot of background that the MBA itself is a degree that is very, um, that is very flexible and that it can be uh, very effective uh, in uh, helping somebody who already has a bachelor's degree in a different field to really get the uh, expertise that they need to be able to function effectively in a business environment. Mm -hmm. And so that's what we've done. So we have uh, re imagined the MBA. Now we have a, an MBA that doesn't require more than one, uh, essentially one course that is self-paced also. Okay. that you can take uh, if you have a degree, say maybe you have a degree in biology or history or in engineering, but you want an MBA, so you don't have to take multiple courses as prerequisites to be able to go into the MBA. You can take this one self-paced course, and then you, go at, you get into the, the mm. MBA, and I, I think that's making it more accessible to individuals. And the individuals that go into those programs, they tend to be very focused. They're not there to sort of try to explore yeah, this or that. Right. They really are serious about their need for that particular degree. And so they're very conscientious and, and, and they're ready to go. So mm -hmm. we want to make it as easy for them to get into that program as possible. Remove the obstacles as yes. much as possible. Remove obstacles, correct. Three new academic programs. So there's, a, there's three of them here, aviation management, business analytics and, and financial econometrics. Yes. So t let's talk about aviation management first. Yes, well, aviation management, uh, again, it's, it's one of those uh, exciting things that are happening. You know, it, it really all started with our professional pilot program a few years ago yeah. that uh, uh, I think we, we hit the jackpot there because we <laughs> put that program in place. We had very modest uh, hopes uh, for success. 
and then it took off uh, immediately and uh, right now we have over a hundred majors after three years um, and we have you go to the uh, Cape Airport which is where the students do their flying mm -hmm. and there are about there's certainly over 10 aircraft there wow. that uh, are uh, being used to uh, to train our our students well so that's one program so as a result of that, we now created an aviation management program. Aviation management program is, in principle, a program that prepares uh, administrators for airports. So if you want to be an airport administrator, an aviation management program makes a lot of sense. In yeah. some cases, not too many, but in some cases, a student may want to may, may get into the professional pilot program thinking they want to be a pilot and then for whatever reason they decide that that's not the case but they still want to be involved in an aviation field so that is the one that does it and and we're we have hopes now and we're planning for a, another program that's going to be um, sub supplementing what we do so I really would like to see in the long run a cluster of programs around aviation. That industry is one where the U.S. Uh, has a, a preeminent role in the world. Mm. Um, and that's not something you can say about all the industries. There are many industries where other countries have overtaken the U.S. Mm. This is a, 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 a field where, where, where the U.S. is still uh, preeminent in the world. And so I believe that we are in a good position to create a cluster of programs around aviation um, and, and part of that is the, the drones. Uh, as a matter of fact, we have a drone program. Yep. Um, and and, and uh, down the road, you may even consider uh, the po possibility to, to uh, offer other degrees. Uh, uh, one that comes to mind is uh, um, air traffic controllers, which of course are very badly needed, um, yep. uh, aviation mechanics. Uh, so there are a number of different programs that could be uh, become and form a cluster around aviation that I think would put the university in a very unique place. Yeah, I guess we could say the sky's the limit, maybe? Can we say <laughs> that? Can we say that? <laughs> That's right. Oh, okay. Uh, we're going to run out of time. So we'll, before we move on, let's one more. Let's do financial econometrics. What is right. that? That's um, uh, statistical analysis uh, uh, used in, 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 the, in the finance world. So how do you use how do you use statistics? How do you interpret large amounts of data, uh, financial data? And and so it's a it's a name. It's a program that uh, the faculty are very uh, excited about now. And and again, it is a variation of what we've done in the past. We're as time goes on, as technology evolves, as our ability to analyze data, computers are more powerful, mm -hmm. uh, become uh, available, we need to keep moving our programs to see what is it that we offer our students so that they can become increasingly relevant and, and, and competitive in, in the marketplace. So uh, financial econometrics is an example of, of that, um, yeah. using statistical mm -hmm. uh, methods in, in, in financial data. And I guess this is something we you have to keep constantly watching to see what the market's doing to know where the university needs to be, right? Right. Uh, I mean, uh, the other one, business analytics, again, is the same, same thing. thing. You know, looking at okay. how to process data and large amounts of data, because with the ability that we have more and more to uh, uh, gather data, um, it, it becomes, the, the problem then becomes how do you interpret yeah. those data? And, and, uh, and so some of these programs will give you that that uh, possibility. So the Office of Admissions has launched a transfer center. What is the purpose of the transfer center and what will it do for students? I, another exciting thing happening, um, historically universities uh, focus a lot of their efforts in recruiting uh, high school students, uh, what mm -hmm. we normally refer to as first time, uh, first time uh, college students. Um, and we have uh, to some degree, not paid enough attention to the transfer students, students who may go to a community college or to another four-year institution okay. who decide to transfer into our institution. Typically, we don't have a very structured and organized um, orientation for those students. So this transfer center, the objective here is to really become a one-stop shop for students who transfer into the university uh, from community colleges and, and other, uh, other four-year institutions 
so that they can navigate our environment easily and that they don't have to suffer a lot of uh, frustrations because they are coming into a new, a new environment. So uh, that, that is really an exciting opportunity. Uh, we're hoping that that's going to in continue to increase uh, students uh, transferring into the university because they're going to feel that we're friendly yeah. uh, from that perspective. You yeah. know, we're transfer friendly. We are providing the resources yeah. that, we, that they need that sometimes people just you know, throw them in yeah. there and Good say, you, you should know how to deal with this. You're already in higher ed in a community college. Yeah. Well, that's, it's not the same. No. Every time you go to a different institution, you have to learn how that institution operates. Yeah. It's not as trivial. Right. So we've got uh, about 90 seconds, I guess, or so. So I'm going to end with um, the Transforming Lives campaign. Mm -hmm. Kind of tell us about the campaign and sort of where we are at this point. Yes, well, very briefly, uh, we are right now um, at just over 70% of our goal. It's a $60 million goal that we have uh, in this campaign. The campaign focuses on four areas, academics, athletics, facilities, technology, mm -hmm. uh, and it's a comprehensive campaign. So we work with donors uh, to encourage them to donate, to uh, contribute to uh, developing our infrastructure in every one of those areas. It's going very well. We're excited about what's happening. Um, there's still room for improvement, there's still room for doing more, but our advancement division, um, uh, the vice president for advancement is also the executive director of the foundation, right. and the foundation is the arm of the university where resources are uh, put in. It's a, what's called a charitable organization, a 501c3, mm -hmm. mm -hmm. where people can contribute to it, um, that get the benefit of, of the taxes uh, being reduced, right. but at the same time help the university make sure that we move forward, um, take a step forward in our ability to develop mm -hmm. programs um, that have the right infrastructure for, for students. So we're excited about, about the campaign. It's going, coming along very well. That's great. We're out of time and we've had a lot of things to talk about. Dr. Vargas, thanks so much for being here today. Thank you very much, Danny. It's a pleasure, as always. Focus on Southeast is a collaboration of KRCU Public Radio and the Department of Mass Media here at Southeast Missouri State University. Just a reminder that portions of these conversations will be broadcast on KRCU Public Radio and will also be available at krcu.org and on the station's YouTube channel. From the Rest Center for Media, I'm Dan Woods. Thanks for watching. Be sure to tune in next time when we focus on Southeast.